You might be wondering, if an error boundary can't catch errors in the layout.tsx file from the same segment, what about errors in the root layout? It doesn't have a parent segment. How do we handle those errors? Next.js has thought of this. It provides a special file called globalerror.tsx that goes in your root app directory. This is your last line of defense when something goes catastrophically wrong at the highest level of your application. It is a little verbose to simulate and catch errors in the root layout, so let me show you how to set this up. To introduce an error in our root layout, in the app folder, I'm going to add a special wrapper component that throws an error. So adjacent to the root layout.tsx file, create error wrapper.tsx. I'm going to paste the code and walk you through the code. You can find this code on my GitHub repo, but let me quickly go over what we have here. Error wrapper is a client component, so use client directive is present at the top. We are importing some styles, the use state hook from React, and then we have this error simulator component. It accepts a message and throws that error message if the error flag is set to true. Error is false by default, but when you click on a button, simulate error, set error is set to true, and the error is triggered. The error simulator component is present in an error wrapper component, which accepts children props and renders the same. This component is necessary to throw an error from our root layout. So in layout.tsx file, import the component and add it to the JSX wrapped around children. So add a wrapper, opening, and closing. Next, add a global error.tsx file in the app folder. So adjacent to layout.tsx, new file, global error.tsx. This file should export a React component that will be rendered when an error occurs in the root layout or any of its nested routes in the absence of an error boundary. Once again, to save time, I'm going to paste the code. You can find this code in my GitHub repository. We start with the use client directive since error boundaries must be client components. We then import some CSS. We then define a React component called global error, which displays an H2 heading, something went wrong. On click of a button, we call window.location.reload and the text is refresh. Very simple. Now in both files, Tailwind classes are used for styling and you will notice the globals.css import. The file does not exist yet, so let's create it. In the app folder, create a new file called globals.css. Include Tailwind base, components, and utilities. All right, our setup is now complete. In the browser, when you navigate to localhost 3000, you should see our newly included wrapper component wrapping page.tsx in the app folder. Using this wrapper component, we can trigger an error in the root layout. Click the button. Now we don't see the global error boundary kick in. We only see the error overlay. This is because the global error boundary only works in production mode. In development, you will see the default Next.js overlay instead. So we have an unhandled runtime error and the error message simulated error in root layout. In the terminal, press Ctrl C to stop the development server and run the build command. npm run build. Then start the production server with npm run start. Back in the browser, simulate the error in the root layout again. Now we still don't see the global error UI and we don't see the error overlay either. The reason is that Global error.tsx needs to include its own HTML and body tags because when this error boundary kicks in, it completely replaces your root layout. We have HTML and body tags in layout.tsx, which also need to be included in the global error boundary. So HTML and body. Let's rebuild with npm run build and rerun with npm run start. In the browser, simulate the error again, and we can see the global error UI. Something went wrong, and a button to refresh. That corresponds to the JSX present in our global error boundary. Works only in production mode, and requires HTML and body tags to be rendered. 
These are two crucial things you need to know about globalerror.tsx that makes it different from our regular error.tsx files. Since we can't catch any more errors, it is recommended to have global.tsx as simple as possible. HTML and CSS would be the ideal scenario. You wouldn't want errors from your global error boundary. All right, that covers the key concepts about error handling in the Next.js app router. Supporting the channel is free. Please like and subscribe. It helps a lot.